Yeah, we, we've uh, we've had peregrine falcons nesting in in Edmonton. Uh, well, they've probably nested here for thousands of years until the 1950s when they uh, they died out with uh, pesticide pollution. The last pair that nested in Edmonton was right at the Quinell Bridge there on that cliff uh, just upstream of the Quinell Bridge in 1960. And slowly the population has been building up in Alberta. We're up to 68 or 69 pairs right now. Uh, and uh, this is a pair that nests on the high-level bridge is one of those pairs. Unfortunately, this pair has had, uh, you know, it's a good adult pair. Uh, everything's good about them except for where they have to nest or lay their eggs, and that was on the eroded concrete of the bridge, and every time it rained, the young, uh, the young or the eggs would be flooded and we'd lose them. So uh, we needed to do something about it and put a tray in or something like that or a small nest box. And uh, we did that with the help of the technical rescue team of the fire department, the Edmonton Fire Department. And those lads knew what they are doing and, uh, and dropped these two boxes in for us today. So. It's been a commonly used uh, way of managing falcons that insist on nesting on man-made structures. Uh, over the years they've tried to nest uh, in areas where they're going to be a problem. So to encourage them to be uh, somewhere else on another part of the building or uh, just to make it possible for them to breed successfully, we experimented with little boxes and it's a pretty simple design. Really what they're after is a roof over their head and some gravel to nest and to lay their eggs in. And uh, they don't build their own nest, they just scrape a little bowl and the bowl and the substrate holds the, uh, the eggs together and uh, drains well, keeps them alive and dry. Certainly have embraced the peregrine uh, recovery program uh, since the very first peregrines we've had come back here. People are really fascinated by the birds. They follow them on the webcams that are on various nests. Uh, and they make a priority of some uh, wild area conservation within the city, uh, whether it's the city uh, River Valley or some of the wetlands in the outlying areas. Uh, if you've got this sort of thing, you're going to have peregrines back. We have bald eagles back. We had a pair of ospreys circling the bridge as we were uh, installing the peregrine box. Uh, all three of those species were in uh, pretty bad shape in the 60s because of pesticide problems. And now they're back nesting in the city limits and uh, that's an indication of a, of a good environment, a clean environment. Uh, I love getting outside and I like to see things come uh, to full circle to, uh, you know, to concern, to, uh, to happier times for certain species, whether it's peregrine falcon, piping plover, uh, whooping crane now, uh, there are a variety of species, trumpeter swan coming back, uh, just in improvements in the fortunes of certain species that we've actively managed for many decades. When you start seeing it work, uh, it gives you hope that you know, the, the, the really tough challenges now are, uh, are going to be met.